The Expert Series is brought to you by Draw Paint, the dry erase paint company that specializes in the highest quality of whiteboard walls available worldwide. Draw Paint is constantly undergoing tests and procedures to ensure industry leading, top quality products with three selections to choose from. Recruit, Unique, and Limitless are guaranteed to suit all your dry erase paint needs. kind of put a lot of information through these these mediums like your website or do you kind of uh, leave like a contact for them to reach out to you so in, in terms of now what what do you mean like um, say say I'm looking for a home right um, mm-hmm. do you have a lot of this information about your listings on, on your website itself or did you kind of uh, allow them to, to reach out to you on their own time got it got it so I, I would show them the full details, but of course, uh, so I, I built this website for my uh, listing. You can check it out. It's 41clintonmode.com. So you'll see the, what really matters. So pictures, videos, and an overview of the place. And then you can dig down into details. And then of course, my contact information is on there in case you'd like to, uh, ask any questions or you'd like to see the property. Uh, do you find that that's the, the best way of actually attracting these, these clients? So there is no wrong or right way. There's no best way because it's, especially with internet, with social media, people are still figuring things out. There's no science to it. it you know, it's, it's people. It's not like, oh, if I mix um, if I mix calcium with fluoride, I'll get this, this chemical. It's no, it's like, okay, what draws people's attention? Knowing that everyone is a different person and are drawn by different things. So it's really hard to figure out what's best. Absolutely. So we're going to try experiment and uh, see what works. Yeah. I mean, that, that's essentially what we've been doing, right? Is, is, uh, we'll reach out to these people, um, such as yourselves. Okay. And it's really up to them to be on board. And we're lucky to have right. people such as yourself, but uh, right. others, um, it's much harder for them to understand the message, I guess, because they're still sure. unsure of, of what social media is and what it can do, I think. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, uh, just to bring it back to some of the goals you've set, uh, now yeah. obviously one of them has been the Boston Half Marathon, and even going forward, the full Boston Marathon. Um, yeah. what, what kind of goals have you set You know, at the beginning of your career, and even throughout it. Sure, sure. So in terms of real estate, um, one big, big goal I have is to become the best broker in Boston. And uh, a micro goal that I have is to sell 41 Clinton Road, the house I was mentioning before. So in terms of these goals, um, it's always good to have macro goals and then micro goals to sort of, you know, step by step to get you there. Does this change often, would you say? This list of micro goals? Micro goals, yes. So, for example, the half marathon, I said that 12 weeks ago and I crushed it. And then now it's on to the next thing. You know, I, I want to run the full Boston Marathon. And then it's on to the next. I want to sell this house. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then eventually, I'll get to be the best broker in Boston. Yeah. It's a, it sounds like a, you know, a good plan, of course. Indeed. Um, now, b- besides that 12 re- week, was it um, pretty crucial training that, that, that you went through? It, it was hard, but it wasn't excruciating. I know that I could have trained harder and I know I could have pushed myself more to get a better time, but this is a good way to begin my journey and I didn't want to push myself too much to essentially maybe hurt myself and that would take a long time and that would set me back. Definitely. Well, it sounds like, you know, you're quite busy from from the training to, to working with your right. clients. What other activities do you like to, to do outside of work right now? Well, first off, work, real estate really, it, it takes up your whole life because you're, you're doing a lot from 
I don't know, from, from 7 a.m. To, to 10 p.m. I can have 15 hour days. And after that, you know, I, I could sleep and then do it all over again. And then, you know, there are some days that I just don't have free time at all. But I don't mind because I love real estate so much. I just love helping people. But, you know, on the days that I don't have it, I enjoy lifting weights, yeah, exercising, like martial arts. As I mentioned earlier, I enjoy socializing, meeting new people, uh, hanging out with old connections, and um, reading and learning new things because you always have to improve yourself. Definitely. Even um, another interview that we had done yesterday, um, mm -hmm. it was with a dentist. Now, he's, right. he said uh, he's, he's been reading like his whole life. Um, he's yeah. been in the, the dental industry for about 30 years, and he's always just either listening to books, reading new books, because he has this. He says he has this insecurity um, that that he's gonna kind of fall behind. So he's just trying right. to learn as much as he can. Would you say you're one of those kind of addicted to, to learning and always improving? So yes and no. So addicted to learning and always improving, yes. But insecure that I'm falling behind, no. So I always know to continuously improve myself. But I also realize that it's very dangerous when you have uh, too much stick and not enough carrot, so to speak. So I've learned through the years to have a more uh, coach uh, mentality to my internal monologue. Because everyone has an internal monologue. They talk to themselves a certain way, and it's very easy for that to be overly negative. But if you think about it, do you ever speak like that to anybody? Probably not. How do you speak to your very, very close friend that's having a tough time? Hey, Billy, it's, it's all good. You're going to pick yourself up. You're going to do this. You'll be fine, right? And they are fine. It's not like, oh, I'm not berating them. I'm not saying, hey, you got to do this. So I've learned to have a little bit more care in my uh, internal mind. No, that's a that's a great metaphor for life, I think. <laughs> Indeed. Now, um, have you kind of been like that, you know, your whole life? Just always driving yourself, Not I guess. No, no, no. As I said in the beginning of our conversation, you know, one or two things can change your way, can change your life in a major, major way. So, uh, I remember I wasn't always very hungry in terms of learning. Growing up, I would like to play video games and watch TV and just hang out. And, you know, 13 year old me looking at me now is completely different and he'd be like, who is this guy? I want to be him. <laughs> It's, it's great to, you know, have these moments where you can kind of look back at how far you've come, I think, right? Right. Absolutely. Um, now, something that I've learned is... And just just yeah. to add on that too, Noel, um, now, now that you say that, so the, the sort of mentality that people have, why people have such negative talk is because they compare themselves with other people. And it's very important to not do that because you're comparing apples to oranges. When you compare, you have to compare apples to apples. And what that means is you have to compare you today with you yesterday, with you last year from five years ago, and see, hey, how far have I gone? How, what have I done? What have I achieved? Am I happy with what I've done? And if so, great. If not, what am I going to do to get where I want to be? Definitely. I'm glad that you say that, that, that it's only fair to compare yourself to your previous self, right? Um, mm -hmm. Do you kind of think social media has made that difficult? Because it seems like people are only posting the good. Um, what, what's your take on that? That's, that's very interesting that you bring that up. So it's very common in modern society that people see the surface level. They see the good on Instagram and they're like, hmm, why is my life not like that? But you really have to understand that Instagram is a place for your highlights. You're never going to put a picture of you in, in your bathrobe coming out of the shower. 
you know, your, your hair's not done, you're not going to do that. So you have to realize that these are highlights, and you can compare highlights with highlights. But also back to the comparison thing, uh, when you look at other people and their Instagram pages, for example, it's good to draw inspiration, but never compare yourself to them because it's not the same metric. Definitely. That makes a lot of sense. Now, obviously, it's not always smooth sailing, right? People go through these trials and tribulations throughout their lives or throughout their careers. Can you kind of talk to us a little bit about these moments of adversity you've had? Sure. So, of course, nobody's life is perfect, and there is a lot of ups and downs. And I've been through some tough times as well. And one overarching thing, one key takeaway for for my life in general is never give up and you'll always be okay because no matter what happens you are still you you are still here so learn to be grateful for what you have you have a healthy body you live in a good country in the world you have a good infrastructure you have food to eat you always have things to be grateful for and when you're grateful for things that sort of puts an end to any negative talk and you can sort of build up from there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense it's just because a lot of these people, they do end up giving up, right? And they, they tend to do something else and their life kind of, I guess, spirals out of control in, it, in a way. Indeed.